Hi, welcome to our episode number two on MyDynamicTV.com. I'm Julie and today I'm going to talk about a public transportation system, introduce you to the Danish language and also guiding you in finding more information about studying in Denmark. For the entertainment part, as I promised you last week, um, I'm going to tell you four more places that you can visit in Copenhagen. So if you are ready, please join me in part one of the show. Well, did you know that Denmark is the largest exporter of pork in the world? The Danish farmer produces around 25 million pigs every year and 85% of this production goes to export. It also makes pig meat as one of the most important export products. Well, with a population around 5.4 million, you can definitely say that there are more pig heads than the dens themselves. Well, you just arrived at the Copenhagen airport and you want to go to your hotel to take some rest. What do you do now? You can, of course, always take a cab. But do you know it's very easy to use public transportation in Denmark? You can take the metro or the train directly from Copenhagen airport to the inner city of Copenhagen. And in Copenhagen, we have various means of transportation like buses, train, metro or S train. If you want to go outside Copenhagen, then the train provides you very easy and comfortable transport between the regions. To make it easier for you to use the public transport system, there is one website that helps you with the planning process. It's called riseplan.dk, which means journey planner. To talk about the Danish culture, it is impossible not to mention the Danish language. Even though 80% of the Danes do speak English, but it's very important for you to learn to speak Danish if you want to stay here for a longer time. And Danish is not exactly the most beautiful language in the world. As a matter of fact, there are many foreigners who find the language very funny or weird. And they even think that the Danes speak with a hot potato in their mouth. The Danes themselves, they are of course proud of their own language and find it charming. But they do aware of the fact that many foreigners do have difficulty of learning the language. Because of that, they do have one sentence that they would like, you know, find it amusing to test foreigners. Um, because they know it's impossible for foreigners to pronounce it correctly. And the sentence is, <laughs> See, I cannot even say it myself. It actually means red porridge with cream, a very special Danish tradition, um, a Danish tradition for dessert. So if you're going to stay here for a longer time, please make sure you can practice and you can say that sentence, Hoi Kroi Mifle, and the Danes will be very proud of you. Last week we talked about where you can search for a job. Today I'm going to talk about where you can find information about studying in Denmark. Here's one website for you to check out. It's called studyindenmark.dk. This is the official website from the government providing you with practical insights and information about studying in Denmark. In the last episode, we recommend four places for you to see. Nihau, the Little Mermaid, a maiden ball palace, and Storch, the walking shopping street. So what else to see when coming to Copenhagen? First of all, even though Copenhagen is a big city, it has something for your kids too. Tivoli, for example, located right next to the central train station. Tivoli is a kind of a park with different rides for your kids and also for adults. They also have a lot of concerts and parades. Tivoli normally opens from April to October and they also open in Christmas. So click on tivoli.dk and explore whether it has something for you. Well, believe it or not, there is a castle right in the heart of Copenhagen. It is Rosenborg Castle right behind me. The castle is placed in the King's Garden and is a very famous place both for the Danes and the tourists. It attracts more than 2.5 million of visitors every year. See so if the weather is with you and you want to find a nice place to rest, 
then I'm sure that the castle and the king's garden is the right choice for you. Well, sorry. Like I say, the park is so beautiful and so relaxing, so I just take a nap. Um, you know what? If you haven't, if you still want to explore the green side of Copenhagen, then Botanical Garden is the must visit place for you. The Botanical Garden is the living museum and home for more than 22,000 living plants in Denmark. So definitely it's a place that we would recommend for you to see. What if you only have one day to explore Copenhagen? What do you do? Well, we will recommend you to take a tour on a water bus. It will give you a wonderful experience of Copenhagen from the water side. And you can catch the bus from Nyhavn or many other different places. And it doesn't cost that much. For the full day pass, it costs around 75 kroner. If you want to see more of Copenhagen, then you should check this website out. It's called sightseeing.dk. And here you can find various offers of sightseeing tours in and from the city of Copenhagen. You can also read more about a water bus tour on the website as well. Well, that's all for now, folks. In the next episode, we're going to give you some more advice about your settlement here in Denmark. For example, housing. Otherwise, I hope you have enjoyed the show. And if you have any comments or questions, please write to us. Otherwise, see you next time and thanks for watching. Bye bye. No, it's a. Uh, I don't know. And, you know, and if you're going to stay here for a longer time, I'm sure that you, you will see many dancers will test in it with you. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> It's only cost you around 20... It was so good in the beginning, why? Until then, thank you for watching. <laughs> I hope you have a great time. <laughs> and take care and bye. <laughs>